Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here with uh, part of my vlog every day in November and every day except, you know, that one day and that other day that I missed. Um, this is my number five of my top ten. And I gave Twitter a couple days to guess um, my number five. And then I gave some hints that it was a Feld. And <laughs> not even Brian guessed it, I'll be honest. No one actually remembers this game because it came out a couple years ago, had a good run, and then fell off the face of the earth, and they never reprinted it, and no one ever remembers it exists, but my snap pick gonna be replaced with Aquasphere number five is Luna. Um, Luna is a two to four player game in which, I don't know if you can see it, you are on these outside islands, like on the outside of this thing, um, searching for things and gaining knowledge in the temple. And basically, it's action selection. So you have all these meeples on the islands. And if two of them were to jump off the water of this island, you can shove one of them into the temple to go study. You can take the action that's listed on the island. You can build a shrine if you have the right conditions. Um, and then each island has a special action token you can gain from it to help you with other parts of the game. <sighs> Sorry, it's been a long one, guys. Um, but the best part of Luna is kind of the way turns work. So you go around and around, and you take as many actions as you can and run until you pass. But by passing, you snuff out a candle. There are four candles, and if you snuff out four times, or you snuff out once and someone else does it three times, or a total of four snuffs happen in a round, the game is the round is over. And so um, there's definitely some manipulation in when and how you end the round and why. Um, my favorite anecdote for that is the last time we played Luna, uh, we were at Chuck's Hop Shop, which is a beer place. And we were playing Luna, and the game was going uh, very well for my friend Mal. And we went around and went around, and everyone was doing okay, but Mal was really on a good clip. And we get to the last, final round of the game, and Mal takes an action. And Brian's sitting across from me right after Mal, and I'm next. And Brian just says, you know what, I'm passing. So this is like the first action of the last round and he's passing so I just said F it and literally that round only got two actions because we just passed in tandem um, really funny stuff still to this day I think Mal has a bad taste in his mouth from it um, the bits are neat the game takes up a lot of space and the, co the color scheme that they chose is a little weird but there's absolutely zero reasons why this game should not have gotten a reprint. Um, the only reason I feel like it didn't actually get a reprint is that, let's say I'm Z-Man Games, and I've got this cool game in 2009 that comes out, does okay. Around 2011, when I'm thinking about reprinting it, I get wind that Stuffenfeld has no less than six games in the pipeline, four of which might hit in the same year. I may not decide to reprint his game if that's the case. So, I think Luna just has bad timing. Um, I am very much looking forward to Aquasphere. Uh, I have now been at three events that has Aquasphere at it, at which I said, nah, I don't need to play that. I've got my copy coming. I'm back to the TMG Kickstarter. I'll be fine. And every effing time, let me tell you, I go home and I regret it, not having played it. Oh my gosh, okay. I think opening this new store is going to kill me. Um, I'm going to go and go to bed early, which is not like me. Uh, Luna's easily my number five. I hope to play Aquasphere very soon, and that might take it over. We played our second game of Hyperborea tonight which was really neat. I had uh, played it for the first time and purchased it yesterday. And then tonight we played with the character abilities, like the asymmetrical abilities. Um, 
the table was not convinced that those are balanced. I always feel like with asymmetrical nature things, I won't know until a few plays in, but they were really unhappy with them as we were playing. So I'm excited to get more plays of that on the table. Um, my pick next time, the number four, is a card game. It's a combo-based card game, which is the kind of card game I like. Um, no one has guessed it again, but, uh, when you see it, you're just gonna face Palm. It's not Race for the Galaxy, it's not number four. I think actually in my top 25, Race only came in as 23, because it's hard to get on a table. It's hard to play against people who have not played as much as you. It's really hard to play with people who have played a lot more than you. And without the expansions, the game is not as good. So most of the things in my top 10 are going to be good on their own, playable with almost anyone, anytime. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but honestly, if you like board games, I, I can get Luna on the table with you. If you like board games, that means a lot, and I can, I can do a lot with it. Um, race is just the symbols and everything. so hard to remember what everything does their first game, and if someone else has played it before, they're just going to stomp you, just stomp you into the ground, so, um, sorry for the lack of energy, but I will be back tomorrow, and hopefully a little bit more hyper, and one of these days I'll remember to do my vlogs when I say I'm going to do them, um, until then, it's nice to see you all.